Okay, so I'm here right now with my sister, and um, you might hear her dogs. Uh, they're out on a little nature walk right now in, in uh, Raccoon State Park. So we're here together with her, and I uh, just wanted to get some feedback from her on how she's been using it and how she likes about it. So, uh, you know, we've had this since we were kids. Yeah, <laughs> well, actually, we got, my parents got the trailer about the year that I was born, so it's pretty much been in our family my entire life. So... They were using it, and we used to go to Aztec Island every single year to go camping with the family in it, and then it sat for many years, and so I decided that I was going to adopt it from my parents and uh, repurpose it for myself. Yeah, so she's been using it a lot for events. Uh, she does agility uh, all over, and uh, this has really allowed her to get out and travel with uh, with her dogs and do a lot of things now uh, just kind of spin around real quick and I'll keep Kirsty right there but she's actually been towing for years as you might see here with the uh, Honda Odyssey so um, so we'll get into that maybe real quick before we get started with the camper so how you know you you've obviously had the, uh, uh, the Odyssey and how's that worked out for you with towing the, the camper? well the Odyssey has a tow rating of up to 3,000 pounds and the camper is dry, uh, dry weight before well before I load it is about 1900 pounds so that gives me about a thousand pounds worth of added weight that I can put into it when I'm traveling um, so that's kind of nice it really you almost can't even tell that it's back there other than the gas mileage going down significantly um, when you drive because it just tows really really smoothly and um, it's really easy to do so you know for you using the camper you know, doing your events. Why don't you talk briefly, you know, about what you do and how you've used the camper for your events and, and how it's really benefited you. So I go to dog agility trials and I actually use um, the camper to stay at most of the trial sites so that I can actually stay on site instead of having to stay in a hotel. It's a lot easier with the dogs. Um, I actually have three dogs right now. I did at one point had four and I compete with all of them. And so it's easier to be able to stay right on the show site so you can just get up in the morning and roll out of bed and go right to the agility trial and show the dogs. And um, I just have upgraded the setup multiple times over the years to suit that need. So what do you think some of the downsides are with the smaller, you know, size? It's what, 13 feet? Is that about? No, it's actually 16 feet. 16 feet. So, um, so you know obviously with three dogs and you said with the crates you know space starts to run out really quick um it has you know we'll get it we'll show some pictures of of the camper um coming up but it has a um, a dinette um fridge we just updated the fridge and we'll talk about that and then the back bed which is not quite a queen but almost a queen correct yeah so um so yeah so I can see where it'd be really nice to have that, you know, uh, personal space with your pets, which is great. Um, and you have that control. What do you think some of the, are there any like cons with something so small for you with this setup? Well, pretty much you don't have a lot of the extra amenities that some people have in a lot of the newer RVs. <laughs> right, um, yeah. There's not a shower. There's not a full size bathroom. There is a bathroom closet where we have a porta potty. And so I have the basic needs. Um, so when I'm traveling to a show site, a lot of times I make sure, you know, most of the show sites have some kind of sinks or water or whatever. And so you have to be a little creative with taking a bath or a shower. And then your uh, power setups, you know, you, you had mentioned a couple of the places that you go. Do you have power sources? Um, you had a small, you know, Honda generator, the 2000 that you've used. And uh, now you're, you know, you're um, uh, actually adding to your solar uh, setup the uh, Blue Eddy AC200, which we'll show in a, a future video with our setup. Um, how do you feel that, you know, that might help you? I obviously, you haven't had a chance to really use it, but how do you think that could benefit? Well, it'll be nice to actually have the extra power source so that I can use it for some of the things like, you know, in the summer, I don't always, I did upgrade and have an AC added to this, but you know, I really only can use that when I have hookup, which is not very often. Right, yeah. And so it would give me some added power sources so I could run a lot of the things on 12 volt 
uh, like some of my coolers and some of the different charging things that I need to do. And really, it's just going to be something that will be allow me to be off-grid a little bit more so that I don't have to always have the hookup. And most of your events, for you, when you're going away, I mean, you're traveling down the road and your events are typically just like a weekend or like three days. What, what time period are you spending in, in the camper when you're, when you're traveling? Most of the uh, general events are on a weekend, so they're uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or just a Saturday, Sunday. But I do also take the uh, camper to a lot of the large events, um, big national events that we have that are, you know, a couple thousand people. You know, a lot of dogs showing, and those can be anywhere up to a week. Wow. Well, let's, uh, that's some good information. Let's go ahead and, uh, do a walk around with some of the things that you've done to it and just talk about the outside. And then, uh, you know, this camper actually had a fire in uh, 1988, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the inside had uh, burnt out. It was 78. 78? 88. We'll look at the back. My father painted a, a small mural back there. Um, so, you know, basically the camper itself has been resurrected. Um, and you'll see some of those pictures also. So let's do a quick walk around. Okay, so we figured we'd start here at the back. And uh, as you can see, we had mentioned that the my father had painted a little mural on the back with the uh, 1956 and 1988 as to when it had burnt uh, in a fire. So, Kirsty, you know, you've, you've mentioned to me since you've had it, how long have you been using the, the trailer? Or? I uh, absconded with it from my parents in about 2009. 2009? Yeah, so uh, we've got a little trailer or trunk space back here. Okay. And inside there, there's actually a fresh water tank um, that's, that you can get to which I don't use very much. I usually just carry my water along and I carry a lot of my things like my jacks and everything that I just use to uh, level. I just level in, um, manually with my jacks rather than actually putting the tires up on the, the blocks because sure. it's easier. Um, the trailer's light enough for me to be able to do that. Right, right, right. So then we um, come around to the side, and this actually is a new piece. This um, is a vent for an air conditioner unit that I had added. This trailer doesn't have enough roof support for them to have done one of the AC units on the roof. So they actually built it into the inside of the trailer, and so this is how they vented it. And then they um, added all the new electric for that. And you had mentioned uh, on the roof you have, you have a new Fantastic fan or... Yeah, I actually had them put in where there was a, a vent already. I had them add in when they redid all the electric inside for me. Okay. A fantastic fan. And that's been awesome because that will actually run off my battery so I can use it even when I don't have hookups, uh, which is really nice. And you had and mentioned so, also that you had added the battery to the setup? No, or? There, well, there was a battery, but I upgraded the battery. So okay. they added a, a marine-grade battery in there for me and then redid all the wiring so that I could actually have some new adjustments like the AC. And then I also um, upgraded the braking system to um, one that actually works off a of Wi-Fi so that this actually can be transitioned to anybody's vehicle as long as they have the piece that goes inside the car. Okay. So like if your car doesn't have the built-in brakes but has the seven-way plug, you can actually work the brakes so i had that added at one point in time and then i had um the propane tank my parents had added a long time ago and uh i've used that mostly it was used for the propane stove top okay and the propane refrigerator that were in there um i actually recently had them take out that stove top because i wasn't using it and it had gotten bounced around and really wasn't safe anymore and just replace that with just countertop. So how are you doing most of your cooking then? I actually have a little small microwave and I bring that along for when I um, do have hookups and when I don't, then I try to plan ahead and bring stuff that doesn't need to be heated up. But I have a single plate induction burner as well. Okay, excellent. So let's just walk around here and uh, why don't you show me your setup. You had an easy up. Uh, at one point, which you were using, um, and then you just picked up this new um, tent. Quick set by okay. Clam. Um, right. 
Yeah, I was using an easy up because you can actually have it go over the, since I don't have currently have an awning for this, it could go over the doorway so that if it rains, you can step right out into your open patio airway. Um, I like to have the dogs be enclosed when they come out of the trailer so they can't just go running around. Right. And so I said, it, I built up and added X pens over the years and then decided to add this quick set by Clam uh, Screen House, which is, uh, this is our first time using it. It's actually working out pretty well. That's great. Um, it's very easy to set up and it fits perfectly, I think, in, in, inside the little yard that I've made. Right. Well, that's so nice that you're, you know, you're able to basically travel and have a really nice outdoor space with your uh, your pets and um, just do the things that you love, which is which is great. Now, sometimes Glenn, your husband, comes along with you. Um, you have the three dogs, so how does that work out with the sleep, sleeping accommodations? Well, it's a little bit more of a challenge because the back of the airstream is actually curved. The bed in the back only has part of it that's a really long and so whoever gets stuck on the in on the curved part of the bed kind of has to scrunch up and so it's not very comfortable and then um so what we did was we shifted it and the dinette set can actually be changed from table down into a bed area and okay. so we put that down into the bed area and so my husband sleeps there and i sleep in the back and of course the dogs all try to climb into the bed with me wow Sure, it gets pretty warm. So heat-wise, and you have the AC, but what do you do for heat? So I have this little radiator heat unit that okay. I use. All right. And it really works well. Um, there's not a whole lot of insulation left in the walls because over the years the mice have taken it out. Someday I'd like to get that taken out and replaced, but it's pretty expensive to gut the whole inside of the trailer, so that won't happen for a little while yet. So this year, this is actually the second one I've had because... I had one and used it for years and then dropped it and broke it. Wow. <laughs> so I was able to replace it, but it works great. Well, sometimes the simplest solutions are come in small packages, and that radiator is pretty small. So that's really great. You know, and when the, they upgraded the electric, they changed me from, it was, we did just use to have a 15 amp plug, but they upgraded it to a 30 amp for me. So that allows me to actually have a few more amenities like using the microwave and the heater and stuff that I didn't used to be able to do. Well, that's great. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to kind of do an update, you know, even for myself. It's been a while since I've seen the camper since you've had it. Um, you had mentioned that you had the new fridge put in. Um, that's propane and electric. That's and actually a three-way. Three I, I spent a little bit of extra money and had them do the three-way, which is the 12 volt electric or propane. Okay. So that I have lots of different options. And then you had mentioned you'd remove the stove top and then yep. just went to a straight countertop. And aside from that, is there any other updates or things that you've done or things that you would like to do in the future? Well, I would like to have the floors redone at some point and um, have the insulation redone. Right. And I would always love to have it polished, but it takes a lot of time to do that. Yeah, well, I think the floors and the other things are definitely a lot more important. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to share, and we'll also include after this video some of the different photos in a slideshow presentation of the fire and the process of putting it back together along with the interior. So, thank you. Welcome to the inside of the 1956 Bambi. I've only done a little bit of renovation on the inside. I would like to gut it at some point and really completely redo it. But let's go inside and take a look. So first we walk into the little dinette. We have a seating area here with a table. This table actually does lower down so that this can turn into a bed area for uh, usually smaller children. Um, this Airstream is supposed to be able to sleep four people. But uh, this area here is a little bit small. So we've got a couple of windows, some shelving above the windows, some of the older style light fixtures. You 
these are the cabinets where we keep most of the uh, plates and cups. And then they get locked down for the travel so they don't accidentally open. If we walk back to the back of the trailer, we have a what is considered a queen size bed. Some more shelving above that for some storage. We have a closet here. The closet has actually been modified and shortened just a little bit so that I could have them put an air conditioning unit in. And beneath that is some more storage, generally where we put shoes and things. And close up the cabinet. On the other side, we have the little kitchen dinette. Again, more cabinets above that. I have a kitchen counter area where I have a microwave little sink. The trailer does have a uh, fresh water tank. It has not been used in years. We've got these little side tables that actually lower down when you're not using them. Storage for the utensils and the pots and pans. I have added a new refrigerator which is actually a three-way refrigerator this refrigerator can work on electric 12 volt or um, propane so I have my options there I also have a little induction burner that I can take out and put up on the the uh, countertop here generally I'll op put up this little table to have a little bit more workspace We also have, believe it or not, a small toilet room. Um, there is not actually a toilet in here. There used to be a pedestal toilet in here. In the old days, they would put a bucket under the trailer and actually put the uh, let the waste go into the bucket. Now I actually have just a little porta pot that I travel with that I can empty out. Uh, you can see there's also some storage in here, a little medicine cabinet, and a light. So this is pretty much the interior of the trailer. There's not a huge amount of space, but it works for what I need for the dog shows. So I hope you have enjoyed our little tour of the inside of the trailer, and you'll come back and see Mark at Out of Office Camping for other tours.